Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Susanna, Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Connard. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad to welcome you to worship today. Today, we continue our series, Living the Faith, as we're taking a look at the stories in the book of Acts and how we might learn from the early church to live our lives of faith today. We want to give a special welcome to those who may be here for the first time and invite you to get more connected in the life of the church. One of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website, share your name and email address. We'll send an update every week with upcoming opportunities for you to connect with others and grow in your faith. There's also information in the connect cards in the pew in front of you if you're interested in signing up right now in the worship center. As we begin our worship service, we want to make space for those that are here and those that are online to say hello to those around you. If you're online, if you could drop a comment to let us know where you're coming from, perhaps who's worshiping with you today. And if you're here in person, we're going to take a minute for you to take a look around, see if there's folks that you don't know or aren't as familiar with, and introduce yourself and say, I'm so glad you're here for worship. Then we'll invite you to remain standing as we join in our Susanna Wesley welcome. Will you please stand and welcome your neighbors this morning? Could you please stay standing for our Susanna Wesley welcome? Let's remember why we're here together today. We follow Jesus' teachings to grow closer to God and to each other. We want our community to be where everyone feels welcome and cared for. Now, let's say our commitment to this out loud. The words will be on the screen. Can you join me in reading them as they appear? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We aspire to be a Christian community where all people grow in their love of God and are growing closer to God through their own. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. All people are welcome with no exceptions. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing as we join in singing our opening song. For a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of Thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the phallus clean, his blood availed for. You may be seated. As you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Creator God, we gather in your presence, eager to experience the transformative power of your love. 
open our hearts and minds to your truth, challenge us to live out our faith boldly, and inspire us to share your message of hope with the world. Guide us as we worship and empower us to shine in the darkness. Amen. I invite you to stand physically or spiritually as we listen to the reading of today's scripture. This scripture is from Acts 17, 1 through 9, and 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Let's connect with the voices of the Bible as we listen to God's word. Paul and Silas journeyed through Amphipolis and Apollonia and then came to Thessalonica, where they were where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was Paul's custom, he entered the synagogue, and for three Sabbaths, he interacted with them on the basis of the scriptures. Through his interpretation of the scriptures, he demonstrated that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. He declared, this Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. Some were convinced and joined Paul and Silas, including a large number of Greek god worshipers and quite a few prominent women. But the Jews became jealous and brought along some thugs who were hanging out in the marketplace. They formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They attacked Jason's house, intending to bring Paul and Silas before the people. When they didn't find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city officials. They were shouting, these people who have been disturbing the peace throughout the empire have also come here. What, what is more, Jason has welcomed them into his home. Every one of them does what is contrary to Caesar's decrees by naming someone else as King Jesus. This provoked the crowd and the city officials even more. After Jason and the others posted bail, they released them. And now from Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Thessalonians church that is in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to all of you. We always thank God for all of you when we mention you constantly in our prayers. This is because we remember your work that comes from your faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father. Brothers and sisters, you are loved by God, and we know that he has chosen you. We know this because our good news didn't come to you just in speech, but also with power and the Holy Spirit, with deep conviction. You know, as well as we do, what kind of people we were when we were with you, which was for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord when you accepted the message that came from the Holy Spirit with joy in spite of great suffering. As a result, you became an example of all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, and the message about the Lord rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place. The news of your faithfulness to God has spread so that we don't even need to mention it. People tell us about what sort of welcome we had from you and how you turned to God from the idols. As a result, you are serving the living and true God, and you are waiting for his son from heaven. His son is Jesus, who is the one he raised from the dead, and who is the one who will rescue us from the coming wrath. God bless our reading and hearing and understanding of scripture. You may be seated. <clears throat> Last night, Nicole, our kids, and I had the incredible opportunity to see the transformative power of storytelling and music at the opening night of Godspell at the Music Theater Heritage in Kansas City. Godspell, if you're not familiar, is a beloved musical that brings together stories from the gospel uh, to tell uh, the story of Jesus in a series of parables and lessons from Jesus' life. It's told with a modern twist and accompanied by a vibrant score. And thanks to our friend John Paul, our family was treated to an incredible experience that for me brought laughter and tears, insight and encouragement. As we watched the talented cast and our very own Ty as the musical director, we were reminded of the timeless message that we find in the Gospels, that we see in Jesus' life, and that we have the chance to live today. The message of love and hope and community that's at the center of our faith. 
Just as the characters in this musical shared the stories and teachings of Jesus, the early believers in our scriptures for today shared the good news of Christ with passion and perseverance, even in the face of opposition. The scripture passages that we're going to be discussing today are part of this larger story of the scripture from beginning to end, Genesis to Revelation, that all point to Jesus. These texts may have been written thousands of years ago, yet they are still alive and active today. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you through them, to all of us, and I hope that you can sense God's presence as you're listening today. Take a moment to write some things down, take some notes on things you want to reflect on in the days ahead so that you can continue to listen to God and to grow in your faith. Before we dive into today's passages, I want to go back over the last several weeks to remind you where we've been in our journey through worship. As we've been journeying through the book of Acts, we have witnessed the transformative power of the Holy Spirit poured out in the lives of the early believers. Two weeks ago, we saw the disciples disciples praying, waiting for the Holy Spirit to arrive. Last week, we experienced faith in song as the choir presented the spring cantata, Footprints in the Sand. And now today, as we turn to Acts 17, 1 through 9, and 1 Thessalonians 1 through 10, we see the gospel message spreading to a particular place. Thessalonica. It is a new region, and it is seen to be transforming lives there. In Acts 17, Paul and Silas bring the good news to this city, to Thessalonica, where both Jews and Greeks believe. However, they also face opposition and persecution from those who reject the message that they hear. Despite these challenges, the people of Thessalonica remain steadfast in their faith. And later in 1 Thessalonians, as Paul is writing to the community, he commends them for their work of faith, their labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope in Christ that he sees in them and that he hears from others. Their example of turning away from idols and serving the living God eagerly awaiting Jesus' return inspires believers everywhere then and now. As we take a moment to reflect on these passages, we see this common thread, the power of the gospel to transform lives and the importance of perseverance and in the face of, absur- uh, in the face of adversity. Just as the Holy Spirit empowered those early believers to spread the message of Jesus, so also we are called to share the good news with others, even in the face of challenges. So let's go back to that first century AD. The Roman Empire, you remember, was ruled much of the area in which this story takes place. In this ancient context, Paul is on missionary journeys. He's traveling around the Mediterranean, and he comes to Thessalonica. This is a bustling trading city located on the Via Ignatia. It's a major trade route of the time. The Thessalonians worshiped various gods and goddesses, and it was also home to a Jewish synagogue. Now, it's against this backdrop in Acts 17 where that depicts Paul's visit to Thessalonica for the first time. He preaches in the synagogue three Sabbaths in a row and makes a big impact on town. He reasons from the scriptures about the Messiah's suffering and resurrection. Now, some people, Jews and Greeks, come to believe. But others, driven by perhaps jealousy, form a mob, accuse Paul and Silas, his traveling companion, of defying Caesar's decrees and seek to drive him out of town. Now, this passage is placed strategically in Acts. It's on his missionary journey. It comes, uh, follows his visit to Philippi and becomes before his visit to Berea. It reminds us that we're a part of an ongoing mission, that Paul is on a journey here that continues. Likewise, we are on a journey to share Christ's message despite opposition. Now, let's fast forward to 1 Thessalonians, where we see that Paul is writing to this community that he has started some time ago. He commends them for their faith, love, and hope in Christ which have become an example to others in the region in Macedonia and Achaia, other regions nearby. He reminds them of their genuine and nurturing ministry and the way that they turn from idols to serve the living God. Now, this passage placement at the very beginning of the letter sets the tone for Paul's encouragement 
and instruction for the Thessalonians. He reminds them who they are and the ways that they've lived in the past. It connects in this book with the themes of perseverance, holy living, and Christ's return as Paul develops these themes throughout the letter. Together, these uh, passages illuminate the transformative power of the gospel and the importance of living out our faith in the face of challenges. Now, they remind us that like the Thessalonians, we are also called to turn from the idols of our day and to serve the living God. Have the ch- as a part of the greater biblical story, these scriptures demonstrate God's ongoing work of transforming lives, of spreading the good news, and establishing communities of faith that impact the neighborhoods and the regions around them. In our world today, we have challenges that can sometimes feel overwhelming. We might encounter opposition to the way that we're seeking to live our life, pressure to conform to the example of other people, or struggle to maintain our faith amid uncertainty. Now, in moments like these, we might look to the example of the Thessalonian believers to provide some guidance and encouragement. Like the Thessalonians, When we encounter people that know about our faith or that we seek to share our faith about, we might encounter resistance to people that might oppose the way that we're trying to live, or we might even face apathy. Who really cares? In situations like this, maybe finding ourselves with our faith being tested. In times of struggle, we can draw strength from the Thessalonians' commitment to the gospel in these times as they faced difficult circumstances as well, and Paul reminds us that they stayed true to their faith. Much more than that, the Thessalonians' transformation from worshiping idols to serving the living God reminds us of our faith's daily impact. In a world that can be filled with distractions and competing priorities, we must regularly take a look at ourselves to consider how we're spending our time and our energy and our devotion and where are they directed. Are we allowing the idols of our day like success or material possessions or our own personal comfort to take importance and precedence? Now, as we navigate the challenges and decisions that we face in our daily life, we can also find uh, inspiration from the Thessalonians' example of faith, love, and hope. By putting their faith into action, loving others unconditionally, and maintaining hope in Christ's return, we can live in a way that positively impacts those around us. Now, ultimately, the Thessalonians' example can encourage us to remain steadfast in our faith, to live according to God's priorities and to trust in God's guidance and strength no matter what challenges we might face. By applying these principles in our daily lives, we can experience the gospel's transformative power in our own lives and become even more of a light to the world around us, to our neighbors and our communities. You see, the good news is that the gospel's transformative power that we read about in Thessalonica is available for us here in Topeka and Shining County, just the same. We also can experience the joy that can come from the freedom of turning away from the idols of our time and serving the living God. So this week, I want to invite you to consider three practical steps that you might take in response to some of the insights from the Thessalonians' example. First, take a moment each day to reflect on what you are giving your time and energy and devotion to. Ask yourself if these things align with God's priorities and if they are drawing you closer to Jesus. Is there a gap that you want to address? And if you identify any idols in your life, you might prayerfully consider how to redirect some of your focus from that to serving God more fully. Second, Look for opportunities to put your faith into action, whether through acts of kindness, sharing your testimony with other people, or standing up for what you believe in. Allow your faith to be visible in the way that you live your life. Remember, your actions can have a powerful impact on those around you. As the Thessalonians made an impact on others in their region, you also can make an impact on your neighbors. Finally, commit to praying each day and studying God's Word As the Thessalonians found strength and encouragement in their faith, we can also draw on the wisdom and guidance that we see in Scripture. 
And when you face challenges or opposition or challenges in deciding between this action or that, that action, remember that God is with you and that you can find hope in the promise of Christ's return. So as we continue our worship service today and into the week ahead, carry the joy and love and sense of community that we see in the community at Thessalonica by following the Thessalonians' example and living out our faith with boldness, kindness, and perseverance, we become a living testament to the hope and love found in Christ. This story of a particular community can remind us to trust in God's transformative power despite our challenges. And just as Jesus' stories and lessons uplift our spirits, we might also offer support and encouragement to each other, trusting that God will work through us to draw others to the truth of the gospel. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you for the Thessalonians' example and for the opportunities that we have to live our faith. Help us to live out our faith with boldness, kindness, and perseverance. Guide and bless us, we pray. Amen. Now, if you're able, would you please stand and join in singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. You may be seated. As you're seated, I want to draw your attention to some upcoming events, some opportunities for you to connect with others and grow in your faith. One of those coming up is uh, starting again for this year as the United Women in Faith Book Club. They gather on the fourth Monday of each month at 6.30 p.m., meeting in the uh, Manchester Lodge, room uh, lounge 206 on the Aldersgate campus, We'd love for you to invite you to consider being a part of this book club. There's a new book every month. Contact Linda Holmquist, who is our liturgist today, if you'd like some more information about the book club. Also, we want to remind you that coming up is our monthly Mission Kids event, this time in May, making May Day baskets to deliver to our community nearby. This is an opportunity during worship for our K through six children to be a part of serving others and being a part, seeking to be a blessing in the lives of other people. We'll be making May baskets um, on the first Sunday in May. 
Also, coming up in May is an opportunity to make a difference in our community. It's the Nehemiah Action Assembly. This is the biggest action of our work for justice, along with a many other churches in the Topeka community. We'll be speaking up to share our voices with elected officials. The Nehemiah action takes place in Lee Arena at Washburn University. It starts at 7, but we want to encourage you to consider getting there early to make sure you're able to sign in and find a seat. This is an important opportunity to make a difference on important issues in our community. We want to invite you to be at the Nehemiah Action Assembly May 6th. That's a Monday night at 7 p.m. We also, in addition to these upcoming events, want to remind you about our spiritual practices. We say them every week to worship, study, serve, give, and share. And today I want to remind you um, about the particular invitation that we have to serve. As we serve, we are the hands and feet of Jesus in the world together by making a difference in the world around us. We can be the tangible hands and feet to make a difference. And we invite you to serve on your own and with others. You can serve on your own by doing five acts of kindness every day, perhaps fo following the example of the Thessalonians as we seek to make a difference in the lives of others. Also, we invite you to serve with others here at Susanna Wesley. We have a number of food collections and other opportunities to serve throughout the year. We invite you to be involved in at least one opportunity to serve with others here at Susanna Wesley every year. We invite you to worship, study, serve, give, and share in the days ahead as we seek to become more like Jesus. We come now to the time in our worship service in which we pause for a few moments of prayer. We know that God is already among us and with us, and yet we take a few moments to uh, specifically and intentionally connect with God in prayer. And there's a variety of ways we're going to invite you to do that. We're going to begin with some time of quiet to let you listen to the way that the Spirit is speaking to you. Perhaps you have something particular on your heart that you want to offer to God. We also invite you to, if you are here, um, it, to pray with your eyes open or your eyes closed. In just a few moments, there'll be names of individuals and families that we're keeping in prayer for a variety of reasons. There'll be a prayer on the screen that you might use today or in the days ahead to pray for particular concerns in our community. If you're here in the worship service, um, in the worship center, there's two candles that are lit here at the front and there's unlit candles available for you. Some people find it meaningful to light a candle as a symbol of their prayers, as a reminder to be the light of Christ, or in honor or memory of someone. We invite you to move at any time to come light a candle at either of these stations as a part of your prayer experience. After our time of quiet, I'll guide us in a together prayer in which there'll be a chance to confess our sins as well. But that's a lot of instructions to just say, remember, God is with you. So take what you want, leave what you don't, and know that the Spirit is with us right here and now. So I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we come before you with hearts full of praise and gratitude. Your steadfast love and faithfulness sustain us, and your grace transforms our lives. We marvel at your power to spread the gospel through ordinary people's lives, and we thank you for the example of those who have gone before us in faith. We confess that we have only sometimes lived up to your call to be a light in the world. We've allowed fear, doubt, and complacency to get in the way of our witness. At times, we've been more concerned with our comfort than with the needs of others. And in this moment's quiet, we bring our confessions and ask for your forgiveness.
Merciful God, forgive us for the times when we have failed to live out our faith. Renew our hearts and minds and empower us to serve you with courage and compassion. We lift the concerns of our community and the world around us. We pray that those who face persecution and opposition for their faith will find strength and hope in your presence. We pray that those seeking truth and meaning will encounter the transformative power of your love. We pray that those struggling with illness, grief, or hardship will find comfort and healing in your presence. Thank you for the gift of this community of faith where we can gather to worship, learn, and grow together. Thank you for the opportunities that we have to serve others and share your love with the world. Thank you for our hope in Christ, which sustains us through life's challenges. Help us, O oh God, to live out our faith boldly and authentically. Allow us to be a beacon of hope and love in a world that desperately needs your light. Empower us to share the good news of your gospel with all we meet and work for the coming of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As so we've taken a moment to check in with God in prayer, I invite you to take a moment to check in. Let us know that you're connected with worship today. If you're online or here in person, you can use the Church Center app to check in. You can complete the online form at our website, or if you're here in person, you can use the Connect With Us card in the pew in front of you, fill out your contact information, and drop it in the clear box at the welcome table on your way out today. We also want to share with you an update about our last, before we invite you to give, an update about our youth garage sale. Um, yesterday, we had an amazing turnout of people, and on Friday, Thank, thanks to many of you, an amazing turnout of stuff. We've got some pictures um, from the experience both Friday and yesterday of both preparing um, the items for sale as well as the sale that happened yesterday. Our lobby was filled and then our parking lot, um, our gathering space, the, the circle drive was filled with stuff and we were able to um, uh, get it to places <laughs> away from those who no longer needed it and to those who needed it. And we're excited this year that we raised over $2,500 to support our youth mission trip this summer. Yes, yes. <clears throat> now, I know that some of you didn't have anything to give and didn't stop by because you didn't want any more stuff. Now, here's an opportunity for you to have an un-garage sale garage sale to support our youth. You can give directly to support our youth mission trip. It's in the Church Center app. You can make a donation and select youth summer trips or use the offering envelope in the pew in front of you. Place a special offering in the envelope, write youth summer trips or garage sale on that offering. Place it in the offering plate on your way out today. This is an opportunity for you to still participate. We might raise that total even higher from what we've already um, collected to help make a difference in the lives of our students as they go to serve in Omaha and Kansas City this summer. Now, we also want to invite you to consider, in addition to this special offering to support our youth, the everyday ministry of Susanna Wesley happens because of your generosity and giving. Our ministry funding plan goes to support everything that we do here, and you can text any dollar amount to 84321. You can use the Church Center app to set up a one-time or a recurring gift, or again, if you're here in person and you'd like to support our ministry funding plan, you can place, fill out the offering envelope in the pew in front of you and complete it, um, place it in the offering plate on your way out today. As you're taking a moment to check in, to consider giving to support our youth mission trip, and our ministry's funding plan, I invite you to listen to the words and music of this special music.
my God, how endless is thy love. Thy gifts are every evening new, and morning mercies from above gently distill like early dew. Thou spreads the curtains of the night, great guardian of my sleeping hours. Thy sovereign word restores the light and quickens all my waking powers. I invite you now to join in our prayer of thanksgiving and the Lord's Prayer as you'll find the words on display. God of abundance, we give you thanks for your countless blessings. In gratitude, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able for our closing song today. Go now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.